Uh, the film is a loose, I guess, uh, biopic documentary on Norman Collins, who's considered the you know, grandfather of the modern day tattoo. Very nice. Or the godfather of the modern day tattoo. I've always been interested in tattoos and getting tattooed, and Sailor Jerry is kind of the, the quintessential American tattoo artist. So um, I was approached by the executive producer Stephen Grass to um, interview Don Ed Hardy and Mike Malone, the two tattoo artists that um, you know kind of heirs to uh, Sailor Jerry's artistic estate. Let's say Mike bought the sh Sailor Jerry shop in Hawaii in, in uh, 1973. So um, Steve had done a licensing deal with them, with Sailor Jerry's art, and had asked me to interview. Don and Ed to get some background information on Sailor Jerry. I went down there to San Francisco to Ed Hardy's shop and interviewed Ed and came back and said, you know, this would make a great documentary. We should pursue this a little further. And he said, great, let's do it. And I thought it would take two months and it took three years. Wow. <laughs> so, which is cool because I budgeted for two months. So, <laughs> you win some, you lose some. <laughs> but how'd you, how'd you work that out then? What'd you do after those two months? I slept on my buddy's couch for two years while I did the film. Uh, Jason Goldberg, who actually owns a tattoo shop in Philadelphia, Old City Tattoo. And um, he helped a lot. He ended up producing the film because of his contacts, you know. A lot of older tattoo artists wouldn't, you know, touch this project with a 10-foot pole unless you know, someone vouched for me. So, I think the first time I called Mike Malone, he told me to go fuck myself, and hung up the phone, and I called him again, and then he was uh, less nicer than go fuck yourself. And then I eventually flew out to Chicago, and I talked to him, and he thought it was a good idea afterwards, and, you know, it was that kind of thing. It, most of these guys, it took forever just to find. Really? And when I did, it was, you know, I had to have people kind of vouch for me. So what do you want audiences to walk away with when they see this? Well, I want them to walk away with... Hmm... <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think I'm supposed to give some, like, chin-scratchy, like, a better understanding of tattooing and the culture around it, but I don't really care what people walk away <laughs> with. <laughs> All right, well. You know, I would like them to enjoy it. Um, you know, I, I like it that tattoo artists enjoy the film. That's the one thing, you know, even the most cynical people that I know in tattooing have watched the film and said, wow, you really got it, you know, and a lot of the people I interviewed are living legends. Each one of their stories could make a film in itself. You have people like Philadelphia Eddie, who's amazing and, and a character in itself, and you have, you know, the, the artist philosophers like Don Ed Hardy, and you have the, the journeymen like Zeke Goen, and, um, you know, comics, comic scholars like Lyle Tuttle. Um, all these guys are, are, are pretty amazing in their own right. And it's nice to have a film that has all of them in it, and they're each contributing to the story. And the real story is not just Sailor Jerry, but it's the history of American, ta American tattooing in general. So did you um, get any tattoos, tattoos done? while you were doing the film? <laughs> <laughs> you the question right out of mouth. Thanks. Um, what's your favorite? Um, no. No one tattooed me. I think if you look at the film, a couple of the guys, the conditions they were in, I don't think you'd want to get tattooed at that particular point. The title of the film, uh, Hori Smoku Sailor Jerry, uh, comes from uh, Sailor Jerry's nickname. It was Hori Smoku. Uh, Japanese tattoo masters have the surname. Or the moniker Hori means to carve, so there's like Horitaka, uh, Horiyoshi, and Jerry was one of the first American tattoo artists to correspond with these Japanese masters, tattoo masters, and he used to sign it Hori Smoku. So if a Japanese person said it because of the way they pronounced the L's, they would say Holy Smoke. So it's kind of like a dig to the Japanese masters, but also giving himself this fake honorific because he was uh, he was a very complex man. <laughs> he was a bit of an asshole, but like um, a prankster and um, a very multifaceted, faceted guy. So now in the film, are you talking to people who knew him, or 
Yeah, I mean, he had basically three protégés, if you want to say, uh, Ed Hardy, Zeke Gowen, and Mike Malone. So I talked to all three of them. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I tried to make it more about the mythology of Sailor Jerry and not really go into his personal life. Um, because I think tat that's what tattooing is about. It's about storytelling and, and making something bigger than it actually is. And, uh, you know, I spoke to his son, David Collins, who, who uh, gave me a lot of footage and a lot of photos. But I didn't want to go into, you know, his family life or anything like that because his, his aura and his mythology was greater. I don't want to say greater, it was just, you know, it fit into the story I wanted to tell. There's a guy who, during the day, you know, during the day would uh, tattoo soldiers and sailors in, into the seedy Chinatown Hotel Street, which is all horror houses and bars, and at night he had a radio show called Old Ironsides, where he, like, ranted on these kind of, like, social libertarian platforms. So he was really a, a social chameleon. He, he changed the way tattooing was with, with colors. He, he invented uh, purple ink. Um, he kind of incorporated the Japanese technique and style of telling a story and shading um, into that traditional bold line American tattoo look. Um, so the stuff you see now, you know, in um, in American tattooing, he's kind of he's one of the guys that brought that in. And to do this um, it, it, from Hawaii, you know, during uh, the '40s, '50s, and '60s is pretty amazing because Hawaii at that time was the last outpost. Um, and the movie really goes into that whole lifestyle and culture of Hawaii, especially the military men. Um, and Hotel Street being like the, the, the last port of call for a lot of guys going into uh, war. So you know, these young guys, 17, 18 years old, you know, have 48 hours in Hawaii to get stewed, screwed, and tattooed. And um, then they're off to fight in Iwo Jima and, and you know, wherever. So, um, the movie captures that time period, so it's a little bigger, it's not just about this one man who changed tattooing, but it's more about the culture and the times around that. This is Eric Weiss for Rain Dance. <laughs> <laughs>